time for our weekly visit with the world traveler currently residing in the Philadelphia airport. He is already stateside. It is uh, my broadcast partner and former Bill Center, Eric Wood, joining us on the line for some of his thoughts about this week five game that was a bitter pill to swallow yesterday, especially from an offensive perspective. But uh, Eric, how do you come out of this in terms of concern for the Bills going forward? Obviously, the injuries are piling up quickly, but the Bills still make a game of this thing. Are you are you ringing alarm bells, or are you more curious as to how the shorthanded nature of this roster is going to be addressed? Should be fine going forward. Let's just let it play out and see if they can triage the situation. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not ringing the bells. The I'm not ringing the sirens at this point, but there is definitely some concern. The injuries even more concerning necessarily than the losses yesterday. You know, yes, it's a conference game. You don't want to drop those at any point in the season. But, man, just with the amount of starters that they've now lost on the defensive side of the football and two guys that I truly thought were playing the best at their position in the entire NFL, off-ball linebacker Matt Milano and nose guard and Daquan Jones, I mean, losing those two guys to potentially season-ending injuries is just brutal for the defense that was already down two cornerbacks yesterday. Starting defense, Ben Greg Rousseau. You have Von Miller on a pitch count coming off an ACL, so you can't overextend him. And so, no, you still have Josh Allen. You still have so much star power, especially on the offensive side of the football. And then the biggest thing yesterday was – you had all those injuries early in the game, and you just don't have that many guys, especially up front, and it just wore on those guys late in the game. And, you know, when you look at how the game played out, those back-to-back three and outs to start the game, when those injuries were happening on defense, and you punt two more times in a row, what that did to the stamina of that defense, especially that front four, was really tough when you looked at the longevity of the football game. Yeah, and as, it, as that game wore on, Still an amazing feat. They they really didn't give up that last touchdown until, you know, they were in, like, all-out mode, going zero blitz on a couple of different plays, trying to stop them at the line of scrimmage, get the ball back to Josh Allen. Then they give up the long touchdown, and then the Bills go back 45 seconds, four plays, 75 yards, touchdown. Now they're right back to a single digit. I mean, this game, it showed it showed the worst part about what was going on with the Bills, and then it showed the best part as well. And it's, and it's always like we've seen, I was referencing this with Brownie, over the last two or three years, it's one of those losses by a single possession where you just feel like you ran out of time uh, and you're looking at your, you know, the team walks in looking at themselves going, man, how, how did this game get away from us? Even with all the, you know, the finger quotes, the excuses that we had, that was a game they, sh- they needed to win. No, I agree. We could run through those and talk about those for the next 15 minutes, but that's not that's probably what you guys have been doing for the last couple hours. Usually I'm tuned in for at least part of the show. This week I uh, truly was in the air, so I couldn't. But anyways, you know, when you talk about the travel and you talk about the penalties and the injuries, yes, those are all valid excuses and they're valid reasons you lost the football game. But, man, to me, you just start that slow offensively. It's just – it's tough in this league to bounce back from those. You have a couple turnovers in the game. The one was super late. The one was essentially an arm punt by Josh. Those aren't, you know, vital turnovers. But to me, moving forward, there are positives to take from this football game. The the play from AJ Epinesa has been outstanding lately. Ed Oliver played another great game. I thought Bernard played another good game. You seem to have some uh, depth. I thought Dory Williams and Dotson yesterday both shown showed some pretty good signs um, at that uh, off-ball linebacker position if they're going to have to play an extended period of time this year. There was enough positives from the game. There's still that firepower on offense. And, you know, when I'm thinking about, okay, what can the Bills do differently offensively to maybe start faster? Well, this this hasn't necessarily been a week-to-week thing. Last week against Miami, you drive right down the field on the first two possessions of the game and score back-to-back touchdowns. So it's not like this is a a trend, but – Yesterday, it just seemed like in an effort to be patient and conservative, when the first down's there with Josh's legs, he's not necessarily taking it. And it's, you know, that short throw to Cook on the first one that's just barely off the mark, and it's a three and out, and it's a check down to Kincaid, and he's one yard short on the second one, and it's a three and out. It's like, man, when we start these games, it's got to be like you went into the Miami game knowing you're going to have to put up a bunch of points. 
And so you started that game off pretty aggressively in, in game plan wise and attacking all aspects of the field. I, I'm not sure I saw that yesterday, and I'm not sure if that's intentionally from the game planning or just simply what the Jaguars looks were dictating what was available for the Bills offense. I don't want to be hypercritical without watching the game film. I do know one area which, you know, you pay close attention to every week, Eric, the line of scrimmage was a struggle yesterday on the offensive side of the ball. The 2.1 yards per carry average on the, on the run side speaks to that. Um, what did you see maybe as some of the chief issues up front? Why this is the first time since week one where they really got beat at the line of scrimmage yesterday. Yeah, and well, the run game just wasn't there yesterday. There was penetration at times, pretty talented front for the Jags, but there was penetration at times, which affected the run game. And then when we've seen this Bills run game take off, you know, really the last three weeks, a big reason for that is they were doing what the Jaguars did to us yesterday. They wear down the other team's defense, they keep them on the field, and then late in the game you're getting those chunk runs, you're getting a majority of your rushing yards in the second half. Well, that, that was the, the blueprint to beat the Bills yesterday. The, and, and we saw ETN late go over 100 yards and break the one for a touchdown late because they had worn down the Bills' defense. And so uh, I'm not overly concerned with the run game struggles yesterday. When you're down two scores in the second half, you're going to have to throw the ball consistently. And they put up a, a bunch of yards there. But you never want to rush. You know, James Cook, the first play of the game, rushes for five yards. And then he ends up on the entire day with five carries for minus four. Like that, that is alarming. But the fact that they really couldn't lean into the run game in the second half to me is, is part of the reason we didn't see any effectiveness there. So going forward, you know, we got the Giants coming in Sunday night football. I think it's really almost at this point, I know it's early in the season, we're kind of early in the week, we're kind of always in this spot. But you kind of sit and see, like, where's the roster going to be on Sunday night? Right. right. Because yeah, the there's just so many injuries. You know, what, what do we see at corner? Uh, Kyrie Elam filled in this week. Is uh, Benford going to be back? And then in that case, we would assume it's Jackson and Benford at corner. If not, is it Elam? Jamarcus Ingram filled in for Elam, Elam late. Is it him? Is it Dotson? Or is it, hey, with a full week of prep, Williams can play next to Bernard in the middle of that defense? Who's lining up uh, as starters along the defensive line? Who's healthy? There's just so many question marks especially on the defensive side of the football, it's going to be interesting. I mean, Brandon Bean uh, has his work cut out for him, uh, and obviously all the evaluations need to take place with these injuries, but you got to get bodies over there because, you know, yesterday those guys just – they got too worn down. And, look, it's generally one side of the ball that gets dinged up worse than the other, and right now it's the defense, and it's in these next coming weeks, and really they needed it yesterday, they just didn't come through for them. The offense has got to step up. They've got to put pressure on opposing defenses – or, sorry, opposing offenses to where they make them play more aggressive because the Bills are playing with the lead. Wouldn't surprise me uh, to see maybe Sean McDermott switch up his defer to start the game to try and put points on the board to, you know, try and get a jump start uh, on teams in games. But this Bills offense has just got to click uh, earlier in the game, and then they got to stay on the field as well because – when you have so many guys injured, you cannot leave your defense out on the field for as much as they did yesterday. Yeah, and and knowing going forward, like even the defensive end position, they do have depth, Eric, but Von Miller could still be on a pitch count next week. You don't know if Rousseau has a day-to-day -day injury or a week-to-week -week injury. Leonard Floyd was dragging his leg around at the end of the game yesterday, uh, just gutting it out because they had nobody else. Kingsley Jonathan went in and out of the game. Shaq Lawson was down with the toe and ankle. I mean, you may see a practice squad elevation for a guy like Cameron Klein this week. Just so you know you have enough guys with snaps, you should be okay at defensive tackle because Puna Ford's active, not inactive this week, presumably, if Daquan's not available. So you should be okay there conceivably. Um, but do you? here's the question. Do you call the defense a little more aggressively to help yourself maybe on the back end, so to speak, if you have enough pass rushers to get after somebody? Well, Sean tried that yesterday late in the game. And, right. I mean, Trevor Lawrence and Ridley, I mean, give them credit on that throw and catch. I mean, that over-the-shoulder throw and catch with the guy barreling down on him when the Bills brought seven. I mean, that's that's a big boy play. And that, that essentially wins them the football game in that moment and, and really put it out of reach for the Bills. Um, 
because that was third down. I think Trevor Lawrence yesterday, like nine on third and fourth down, he was nine for 10 with like 140 yards. I mean, he was excellent uh, in those kind of clutch situations. But yeah, I mean, I, I I think you'll probably see a defensive end get elevated this week, likely would be Klein. So you have more bodies um, at, at that position because you just need depth. And yeah, hopefully Bond can increase his snap count this week. You, maybe you get a Rousseau back. Not sure on that one. Maybe a Shaq back. But yeah, you need bodies up there. And look, I mean, even without Daquan Jones, that's a really talented front up there. And you'd like to think that they can create pressure with four to where you're giving some over-the-top help on the back end. But, yeah, if you're struggling that corner like the Bills were yesterday, you got to try something and credit Sean for not just continuing to to allow the Jaguars to dictate to him. And he did light him up with some pressures. Yeah, and that's that's really the key is the pressure and then how many guys you have to send to, to get there. Uh, the more you send, the fewer yeah, you have Bill- coverage. Yeah, because yeah, heading into the Jacksonville game, the Bills are the best in the NFL at pressuring the opposing quarterbacks, bringing – uh, the second least amount of blitzes in the entire league. And so they've been so good at that. And that, look, and we could give all the credit to the front, but it's also the complexity of the back end of the Bills defense and how they mix man and zone constantly and the different looks. One of my favorite things that the Bills do, and I rarely see it from other teams is, and I'm not sure if this is an in-play adjustment or not, but when teams just run the receiver across the field just to get a simple man or zone read, there's a lot of times where Taron Johnson will run with that guy, which is should signal man to the offense. And then they run zone behind it. And you just see that quarterback pause just enough where then the pass rush is able to get home. Quick thing about the giants, Eric, which I I'm sure you have your ear to the ground on to some degree. They are now the worst offense in football and 31st in points scored Their defense isn't much better. 29th against the run and 29th in points allowed. It has been a precipitous fall from grace for Brian Dable's team. Do you throw that all out the window knowing that uh, there could be a little little bit of uh, coach coach v. coach situation here knowing, I mean, Dable and his offensive coordinator, Mike Kafka, have kind of gone back and forth on calling plays He's taken away from him a couple of times so far this season. So it, we could see, you know, a, re, a resumption of what we saw in week four, head coach versus head coach, McDaniel versus McDermott. We might have Dable versus McDermott head-to-head here, offense versus defense. Yeah, and regardless if Dayball's calling the plays or not, he's going to be um, instrumental in the game plan for this week just with his familiarity with going against Sean in practice. Now, Leslie Frazier was the defense coordinator during the time that Dayball was with the Bills. But Sean has so much influence there. So, yes, this is going to be a motivated Giants staff. You know, they're building, you know, they're similar to how we felt early on in the McDermott Bean era where it was like uh, Charlotte North, the Carolina Panthers North. They kind of feel like they're Bills East right now with the amount of uh, guys from, you know, whether they're Bills cuts or guys that they pick up and guys on their coaching staff. There's going to be a lot of motivation there. There's going to be a lot of motivation on this Bills team too. You play in front of your home crowd coming off of a loss over in London, uh, they're going to they're gonna be looking to bounce back as well. So uh, I wouldn't expect um, the extra motivation to be slanted one way over the other just because those guys came uh, from this Bill staff. One of the things we've been talking about here also is that, uh, you know, you got Josh on this offense. He's playing at a high level. Steph Diggs is playing at a high level. James Cook has had some nice games and some moments uh, Dalton Kincaid has made some nice catches, not really a big play yet. Uh, yesterday, to start the game off, the first third down, James Cook has that ball go through his hands, and it's a three and out on the first series. The next series, uh, Dalton Kincaid catches a flat route, turns it up, and again runs out, gets run out of bounds before the, the first down marker. Pick somebody on this offense that you think needs to elevate to, to get to where Diggs is, to get to where Josh is, some other way, some other guy that can win a game for Bill, the Bills offensively where they've got Diggs and Josh and they're kind of looking for that third guy, another person, another way, another aspect of this offense to emerge to give them another way to win in a game like they had yesterday in Jacksonville, against Jacksonville. Yeah, that's a – that's a great question, Steve, because uh, as me and Chris were talking about adjustments coming out of the half, my halftime adjustment for the Bills offense is four-speed digs. There's no one that can cover them over there. Just four-speed them, and they did that 
uh, at times in the second half. But yeah, when you look at that kind of that that next spot behind Diggs, like you'd want to see Davis develop into it. He's had four touchdowns in four games. He's played well, but then you just have that crucial drop, the one against the Commanders that Josh then throws the interception a couple plays later on. The one yesterday, um, uh, later in the game, it's like those little plays. Um, whether it's a tight end position, either Knox or Kincaid, that can make some plays that can kind of get up near that like 80 yard mark in the game. And then look, Cook showed flashes of being that guy, whether it's on the ground or through the air, just got to do it on a more consistent basis. And whether that's the blocking and scheme or whether that, you know, him just having struggles within the game, someone's got to step up there. I wish I had a more concrete answer for you other than that might be a week to week thing. Like we kind of saw, uh, Hardy break out a little bit in the second half yesterday. Yeah. It might be a week to week thing to where, okay, all this, because look, they're, the opposing defensive coordinators are only going to let Diggs go for uh, six over 100 yards and one to three touchdowns a game for so long before they simply say, okay, we got to fully take him away, do anything we can, make someone else beat him. And, and it might be a week to week thing there. Yeah. You took the words out of my mouth with Hardy. I think we saw some downfield ability that we heard Brandon Bean talk about in regard to Hardy in the offseason. Maybe seeing that on film this week will get him more opportunities this coming week against the Giants. Uh, safe travels, Eric. Uh, good luck getting home on uh, leg number two here, and we'll catch up with you at the end of the week. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, guys.